Hey guys, Stanford here from the Fun Robotics Network, and right now I'm hanging out with Team 8033 Highlander Robotics here at the Orange County Regional, and we're going to be going through the super slick machine they've got here, elevator, arm, that could, and an end effector that can do both algae from the ground and coral, a big funnel, a climber, and all the software that powers it, so stay tuned for all that and more in an episode of Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to Anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. Oshcut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Oshcut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OXHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. All right, Annalise, take it away. So first we have a two-stage cascading elevator. This is a max height elevator. Uh, we made it pretty narrow to avoid racking, and we have carbon tie rods on the sides, uh, which form triangles, so it's more stable. And on the arm, we have a virtual four bar arm that can pick up algae from the ground. Uh, this has two Kraken uh, Max Planetaries on it, uh, one that controls the arm and one that controls the wrist movement. Um, and we have a 25 to one and a 16 to one. So the arm that moves up and down is on a 25 to one ratio and the one that moves the end effector up and down is on a 16 to one. Um, this elevator is pretty stable. It has a crossbar, which helps prevent racking and for the four carbon tie rods, which each weigh about a quarter pound. So what is the like design synthesis for this like look like? So what are you guys doing in the design process to make sure this all integrates very well? Uh, so first we have individual subsystem CADs and then we integrate it into the full robot and we can make adjustments uh, based on like which subsystems hit each other or how uh, the su inner support plates, which our drivetrain has two of them uh, right here and here and the elevator mounts on top of them with two gussets on each, well, two gussets, one on each side. And that helps prevent, uh, helps stability. All right, thank you very much. Let's go ahead and talk about this uh, end effector on the robot. Uh, so this is our end effector. It can take uh, algae from the ground or from the reef and score it directly into the barge, uh, as well as taking coral from the human flare station and scoring it on the reef. So as you can see, we have these um, crossbars that go across the end effector. And what they do is they kind of match the uh, shape of the algae, and that allows the um, algae to fit in it really well. Um, for compression, uh, we had a lot of inspiration from the WCP competitive concept, which was uh, had an end effector that was somewhat similar to this. Um, for coral, we have um, two sets of compliant wheels up here, as well as a silicone, silicone roller with some grip tape at the back. Um, this is all powered by a single Kraken X60, which uh, and everything is like rigged together through gears and pulleys and belts. Um, there's a plate over here which serves as support for the coral, but it's also like a crossbar, uh, cross plate, and it makes the end effector more rigid. Um, additionally, the wheels over here are for the algae. Essentially, what they do is um, pick, manipulate the algae and put them on the uh, reef. Uh, over here are our um, beam brakes, as you can see. And finally, over here is our centering to, as soon as it exits the funnel, you can make sure that it's ready to go on the reef without um, um, so, actually. So what were some of the different iterations you went through when you were kind of prototyping this and getting competition ready for it? So I remember on week one, there was like the whole algae fiasco. And we had the problem with the like uh, shell, the clamshell algae. So we were originally wanting to pinch it, but that's harder to do with the, um, the crosshatch algae. So we went for a design like this. Um, I remember at the start, we also ditched the idea of a um, like ground intake for, for this regional. Uh, but the idea with that is this end effector could go through the whole robot. Um, otherwise, the design process was like largely prototyping. And once we got the compression right, we modeled this whole thing out in like a high fidelity block pad with all the motors and belts. All right, very cool stuff. And uh, let's go ahead and talk about this uh, funnel and climber. Yeah, so um, 
we recognized kind of without a coral ground intake, uh, it's gonna be really important to have a funnel uh, that is almost full width. Um, and additionally, like on top of that, you really wanna have that positive control of the game pieces. Um, obviously, as you're coming into the player station, um, you're gonna wanna be accelerating back forward. Um, but if coral is sitting in your funnel and it doesn't have something actively holding it there, um, you're gonna have to wait until it indexes. We didn't really wanna do that. So what we did is we went and stuck some star wheels uh, at the bottom of our funnel here. Um, these are powered by a single Kraken X44 on the underside. And um, it's kind of dead simple. I mean, we have a one stage reduction and uh, and then a twisted polycord. That's about all you need. Um, what we find this does is, is uh, first of all, helps with indexing. So it gets rid of a couple of jam cases. Um, and also uh, it gets, gets us that active control. So being able to essentially run into the player station and then immediately accelerate because um, that coral is not going to fly out as we accelerate. Um, now, once we actually uh, are ready to climb, obviously the chain is gonna have to go right through here. And so what we did is we put uh, two servos on the underside um, and they have these little hooks um, that grab the funnel trapdoor, as we call it. Um, now the, the key here is that the servos aren't really doing a lot of work. Um, since this is flush here, it's kind of uh, held close pretty much passively. Um, but at the end of the match, these servos will open um, and that will allow this to open up like that. Um, now this isn't big enough for the cage, uh, but it is big enough for the chain. And the cage actually goes under here. So when we deploy our climb, um, what's gonna happen is that uh, this little bolt here gets pushed down by a cam. Um, and that will cause the foot to uh, go ahead and go down. And this foot is just long enough to hold the cage far enough out that it will clear the funnel. Uh, the, the chain goes through the middle and then um, this guy essentially locks in there and that is our deep climb. So I think it's about as simple as it could be and we like that because it's light, um, yeah. So is there any kind of latch or anything holding that little foot down? Yeah, so, so what's really interesting is that a lot of teams, I think, thought that you had to hold it down with a lot of force. Um, and Rembrandt's has this like fancy over-centering linkage, which is really cool. Um, but what we figured out is that if you actually think about where the forces are when you're climbing, uh, you have a chain pulling up. That's about this point, which acts as a fulcrum. And so ultimately, most of the force pushes down into the bumper. Um, and so as long as your foot tries to hold the cage out and not down, uh, you don't need to lock it. So when we climb, at the very beginning, it comes up a bit, but then once it passes the over center point, it slams back down. And from that point on, the cage is just pushing it this way. Uh, it's not gonna come up again. So we can save that complexity by playing with the geometry a little bit. Wow, there's some really smart stuff there. Um, let's go ahead and talk about the software that makes all this thing go. So we've got a lot of really fun stuff going on in software this year. Um, uh, a lot of it is building off of software we've worked on in previous years. You can see on our robot, we've got three uh, camera mounts for, on top of our swerve modules. Like last year, we wanted to make sure our cameras were super rigid, so we printed them out of uh, nylon, put them right on that drive base. Uh, the one on the front here is positioned to see tags on the reef while we score, which has been super helpful for keeping a consistent, accurate pose estimate. Um, all three of these cameras are OV9281 Arducam cameras, uh, plugged into Orange Pies running Photon Vision. Uh, very similar setup to what we had going last year. We've just done a little more tuning to get a little bit more precise because uh, we need to be a little more precise with our scoring this year. Uh, that pose estimate feeds into our auto aligns. So we have an auto align for scoring coral on the reef, for picking up algae off the reef, and for scoring algae in the net. Uh, and all of those have been super handy this uh, season for making sure that our driver is able to think about the high level strategy and not the low level uh, scoring. Part of what makes our uh, robot so reliable is uh, some changes we made to the structure of our code in the off season. Uh, we use WPI's command based format, but we've added on top of it a uh, super, what we call a super structure state machine based system. So this is taking a lot of inspiration from teams like 5940 Bread and 2974 Walton Robotics uh, to really clearly map out what our robot can do and the different states it can be in. This has been super helpful for organizing our code uh, and making sure that the robot uh, does exactly what we tell it to and always knows what's going on. Uh, we developed that system in the off season and it's available, our code is all public on GitHub. We also make extensive use of simulation in our robots. This has been super helpful, uh, especially with the week one tournament this year. This is our first time ever coming to a week one. So we needed to be extremely prepared 
uh, coming out of the gate as soon as the robot was handed over to software. As part of this, we do full robot simulation, so everything on our robot is simulated in some way, shape, or form. We've made extensive use of libraries such as Photon Vision Simulation and Maple Sim Simulation to make sure that we have sufficient uh, fidelity of our simulation uh, to test all the features we want to test. Um, so as part of that, we have a full simulation of the way the robot moves. So we can see here as it runs some auto-aligning features. Uh, we can also see uh, right here, we've got our algae intake auto-align uh, running as it lines up near the reef. And uh, we can uh, see how it uh, has collision detection in SIM. All of this has been super helpful for making sure that the robot uh, is ready to go when it's handed over to software. All right, folks, so that was your look at this 8033 machine. These guys have been looking incredible here at the Orange County Regional. So definitely give these guys a look at future events. Uh, they've been really, really doing a great job out on the field. So thank you guys so much for allowing us to come by and take a look at this robot and good luck with the rest of your competition. Osh Cut is a premier metal cutting service for first teams. No minimum order, options for same day turnaround, guaranteed lead times, and instant online quotes. Osh Cut is offering first teams 50% off any future order up to $200 when you scan the QR code or go to funroboticsnetwork.com slash OSHCUT. Just upload a 3D model or flat pattern to get started. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.